Hello, I'm your server today. What can I get for you today? Um, is this moisturizer by any chance all GMO free and all organic? Um, yes, all the ingredients that we use for that moisturizer is locally grown, USDA organic, and yes, non-GMO for sure. What about um, palm oil and what about um, parabens? As far as I know, it doesn't come with parabens or palm oil. Yeah, I just need to make sure like none of the things that I'm applying on my face is toxic. Silicones? Does it have silicones? Silicone? What, what's wrong with silicone? I just thought it was toxic because everyone's avoiding it nowadays. Is it a dirty ingredient? Good morning friends, Leah here. So today we are doing another Truth of Ingredient series and we're gonna highlight silicone in this episode because silicone is getting a lot of bad reputation for no legitimate reason. So I wanted to bust some beauty myth about this, shed some light. There will be a lot of gems in this video, so let's get started right away. Let's start from the history of silicone. Silicone is actually naturally originated from or is sand and then it undergoes a chemical process it bonds with oxygen and other elements and then it becomes the silicone that we use in a variety of industries out there it has been used in the medical industry for such a long time because silicone is one of the materials that has little to no allergic reaction to the skin it is very very kind and also it doesn't cause any irritation or contact dermatitis or it doesn't have any adverse effect when used on the skin or even inside the skin that's why you would see breast implants with silicones and also contact lenses are made out of silicones cosmetic grade silicones are introduced in 1950s back in the days and then it allowed the entire cosmetic industry to really improve their formula in terms of the feel the sensorial the performance and just overall sensorial experience how to identify silicone in skincare products silicone silane or siloxanes they all end in cone conol or silane or siloxan what the silicon do in our skincare products, our makeup products, and our hair care products. It is a versatile ingredient doing a lot of things, serving a lot of purposes, and that's why a lot of cosmetic formulators love using silicon ingredients into their products. So first of all, it enhances the spreadability of a product. A lot of mineral sunscreens, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, these ingredients are really, really tricky to formulate elegantly because it comes in a very chalky, white, pasty powder. Powder. So that's why it's kind of almost inevitable to put silicone in it to kind of soften everything up so that it applies more smoothly. You'll also find a lot of silicone in foundation products to give you that enhanced spreadability and enhanced elegance and velvetiness and silkiness, just really even application. It also has a conditioning effect and that's why it's used in a lot of moisturizers and also hair care products. Silicones can make it feel less rough, more shiny more lubricated it helps your skin retain moisture and this is a very very important part that a lot of people have a lot of misconception about when I say it provides an occlusive film silicone is one of the most breathable occlusive film out there in skincare ingredients and a lot of silicone free formulas tend to use botanical oil or beeswax or just shea butters or all sorts of butters and they form a thicker or more occlusive barrier which doesn't allow a lot of oily combo skin or even acne prone skin to have that ability to breathe through that barrier. Silicone can offer a very thin layer of very flexible film on top of your skin. So silicone is in fact one of the most non-commutogenic, meaning that it is probably the most suitable occlusive film for those who have acne prone skin, oily skin. I know you guys had a lot of questions, so I'm going to interview an expert to answer all of your questions, or the most common ones at least. So let's talk to John together, who is the Regulatory Director of Grant Industries. Uh, thanks for having me. My name is John Gormley from Grant Industries. I'm the Director of Regulatory Affairs. So first of all, why are silicones getting such a bad rep? Well, this is mainly due to alarmism. This is what makes the whole silicone topic mind-boggling. It actually began with innocent comments about silicones weighing down hair in online forums for people with long hair. I spent a lot of time researching those comments and I traced it to the overuse of two-in-one shampoos that contain high molecular weight silicone gums combined with cationic polymers. Those polymers were used to enhance the deposition of these gums. So 
they could over deposit. This somehow snowballed into silicone free ads which led some to assume silicones were harmful. But in reality the opposite is true. Silicones are safe. Some hair products that previously contained too much silicones, you know, styles changed. Marketers tried to capitalize on trends by making new silicone free ads for their inexpensive shampoos that completely backfired and now undermined their prestige brands that also contain silicones. Are silicones good for sensitive skin? Absolutely the best, as evidenced by nearly 70 years of research in consumer use history. Due to the incredibly low incidence of allergies, hospitals rely on silicone products and dressings for wound care. In the consumer market, over-the-counter skin protectants and silicone scar sheets are FDA-approved therapeutics to prevent scarring. They are inert non-allergenic ingredients that have a proven track record of skin safety. Many ingredients, both natural and synthetic, do not meet this high standards. And the usual assumption is that natural is implicitly equated with safety. And yet, ironically, essential oils are a quintessential example of natural ingredients laden with allergens. Even jojoba oil, ubiquitous in sensitive products, is a proven source of contact dermatitis and sens sensitization in some populations. Do they clog the pores and cause acne? Absolutely not. So any notion that silicone sensitizers somehow suffocate the skin are false. Almost all of the claims about silicones being problematic for skin are apparently myths or based on anecdotal evidence or really can be traced to other ingredients in the product. Silicones are oxygen permeable materials, which means they let the skin breathe. Many primers are based on silicone elastomers for this very reason. So do they fake it by making the skin appear smoother and less wrinkled? And maybe they don't actually do anything. The question is whether silicones can make a person look more beautiful. I'll start with yes, if that's all you're going for in a formula, but it's really more complex than that. So the real goal is instant beauty with enhanced protection and activity. Everyone wants a product to feel nice upon application and as a bonus, improve our appearance. So silicones do a great job of improving the texture of other materials, whether gritty powders, sticky polymers, or greasy oils. And yes, silicone elastomers and powders can mask wrinkles and skin imperfections with their blurring and soft focus properties. Many high performance skincare products are powered by silicones to help protect and boost the activity of peptides, botanicals, and vitamins. Think of a protective delivery system for your skin, that's silicones. Are they sustainable? Do they degrade in the environment? Simply put, yes. Silicones are derived from silicon and quartz, also known as sand. Silicon is the second most abundant mineral on earth and we can never run out of it. In the environment, light silicones evaporate rapidly and degrade in air under the influence of sunlight. The small amounts that find their way into water hate it because they are so insoluble and they complete the cycle by partitioning over to soil where they will be degraded by reversion back to sand. Silicones are not building up in the environment. So do silicones prevent other skincare layers, uh, you know, and actives from penetrating the skin? This is some company's logic for removing silicones. Gotcha. No, silicones are not occlusive materials. They are breathable, film-forming materials which allow other ingredients, such as actives, to interact with the skin more effectively. It can allow time release of acidic or oxygen sensitive actives from a protective layer. By design, silicone elastomers are used in skincare products to enhance skin delivery. So is silicone uh, tricking your skin to feel moisturized but not actually doing anything? One misconception we have heard is that silicones are drying on the skin. Again, this is completely the opposite. Silicones are one of the very few actives used in wound, scar care, and even burn creams to form a protective barrier to prevent transepidermal water loss. It retains moisture in the damaged skin and never ever irritates the skin. The clean beauty movement is about ingredient safety over ingredient origin, incorporating both natural and synthetic materials. In reality, what is safer for your skin than an inert, non-reactive ingredient that aids in the aesthetics of the formula by providing incredible sensory aspects without irritating the skin. Case in point, silicones. Because they're never animal derived, they are vegan and cruelty free by default. The new clean beauty movement needs to understand and prioritize safety and efficacy and not just all about all natural claims. I know a lot of people ask me that if silicone is hard to remove because they have this notion that silicone stay on the skin. So for instance, foundation, um, silicones and primers and also moisturizers, they believe that it just remains on the skin. It, this is really like formulator's choice. If you want something to stay on the skin and make a long wear, like you know, if you kiss your boyfriend and you, you don't want the uh, lipstick to transfer, well, they can make that happen. You know, that's that can stay on the skin. But in reality, it's 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 how a formulator approaches the the product, whether they want it to stay or not. That's waterproofing and, and other things. So no, inherently it doesn't. Again, Grant is a manufacturer and what we do is about education and about safety for our consumers. And uh, we hope uh, this, this journey we're taking together can you know lead to uh, people really understanding what some of these materials are about and not saying good or bad, looking at them and looking at the science behind them. Again, my name is John Gormley, Director of Regulatory Affairs at Grant Industries. I want to thank you, Leah, for your time. 
and for uh, asking me these questions. And you can write me at jgormley at grantinc.com and I'll answer every email. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the interview. I thought it was very, very insightful. If you know for a fact that your skin doesn't do well with dimethicone or other silicone ingredients, you can definitely avoid it. I'm not convincing you to go out of your way to apply these, but I just want to kind of, you know, calm down the kind of aggressiveness towards silicones for no scientific reason. It would mean so much if you can share this video with your friend and family who is obsessed about natural beauty or green beauty or not non-toxic beauty, whatever that is. And I'll talk to you guys later in my next video. Take care. Bye.